Governor Hogan, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Well, thank you very much. It's great to be with you, Trevor. You are one of the governors in America who's fighting hard to uh, keep your state um, in a good place uh, when it comes to the coronavirus outbreak. Where does Maryland stand right now? Well, unfortunately, you know, we're a little bit behind uh, where New York and some of the other places are, but we're not nearly as bad, but we're still on the rise. We've just passed over 20,000, uh, you know, cases, and we just went over 1,000 deaths today. So sadly, our numbers are still on the rise. The Washington area is starting to grow. It, it, it really has been an interesting journey in America because, you know, some people don't want anything to close down. Others wanted shutdowns to happen immediately. But one thing that's been apparent is many governors have been forced to go it alone. You know, you're all making your own decisions. There hasn't been one centralized approach. I mean, the president said he's in charge and then said governors are in charge. So how are you making these decisions? Are you liaising with other governors or are you just looking at what Maryland needs? Well, so I'm the chairman of the National Governors Association and we have had, I believe, 17 or 18 conference calls with all of America's governors. We've had, uh, I think, 12 calls with the president and or vice president, other calls with just the governors. And we're talking with each other kind of one-on-one -on -one with governors all across the country, Democrats and Republicans working together. Um, and we really are sharing a lot of information and talking with each other about the, the crisis and how it's affecting their states and the decisions we're making. But governors are on the front lines and we've had to, we're in a tough position making really hard decisions, um, trying to make decisions based on the science, uh, listening to the smartest people on the infection and how to keep our people safe, while also worried about, you know, our economy and how it's impacting, you know, people losing their jobs and small businesses. You have been talking to the president but you've also been outwardly critical of the president, which is rare of a Republican governor. Um, tell me what you wish President Trump could have done differently or where you think the federal government could have changed its approach in, in how it's working with the states. Well, I, I, Trevor, I've tried my best. You know, I don't think in the middle of this pandemic, where I think it's so critically important that we try to all work together at the federal, state, and local level because the real enemy is the virus. And I think, well, there'll be plenty of time later to go back and take a look at what we could have done or should have done better. So I, I'm not trying to be critical of the president or the administration. They have been working together and getting some things done with us. Mm -hmm. But I've been, I haven't been afraid to stand up when I think that things are not going well. My job as the leader of the governors, both Democrats and Republicans, is to stand up and say, hey, we're not getting help on this. Uh, we, we've expressed our frustration on the lack of availability of testing and personal protective equipment. Um, and a number of other issues. But look, I think they're making some strides and they have been doing a good job of communicating with the governors and trying to address our needs. But we've, you know, we've butted heads a few times, but I haven't tried to go out and, I'm not one of those folks that's just out uh, uh, criticizing the president for no reason. I'm just pushing to try to get the help that we need in our states. Yeah, you, you've also been proactive in doing it for yourself. You did something that was really unique. You personally negotiated with South Korea to get 500,000 testing kits um, for, I think, $9 million. How did that happen, and, and why did you choose to do this? Because, I mean, most people would have said, wait for the federal government, and you just went out and got the testing kits yourself. Well, you know, we, we, we waited, and uh, the federal government, I mean, the president made it clear. He kept saying, he said, this is a local thing. States should be doing the testing. Now, I'm not sure I, I agree with that. I think maybe the federal government could have done more, but we had no choice. We were put in a position where governors were scraping and clawing and trying to get tests all over the country from various providers and all over the world. Um, my wife was born in South Korea, and I happen to have a good relationship with the ambassador, with the president. Uh, and we just made a personal appeal. Uh, we worked on it for about three weeks. My wife speaking fluent Korean to folks in Korea with a couple of other translators, with our scientists back and forth with this company. And, you know, landing a half a, half a million tests for the, the people of our state was a huge thing when states around the country had no tests. Um, and so we were happy to be able to get it done. Um, and uh, it, it took a lot of work. And I want to give uh, the First Lady of Maryland a, really a lot of credit for helping us get it done. It, it's unusual. I mean, states don't normally do international deals like that to try to get this kind of a thing. But I mean, I was happy we were able to get it done. You know, we, we're learning every day that testing seems to be almost the most crucial factor of how we go about fighting the coronavirus. If we don't know how many people have it or have had it, we don't know how to deal with it or move forward. And um, it's very hard for us to reopen society and get back to work yes. if we can't identify and isolate and find out exactly where the virus is to stop so the spread. Yeah, so let's talk, let's talk to that. What are you trying to do right now in terms of getting Maryland ready to open up? I mean, everyone has to think about when to open up, but you can't do it unless you know how many people have or have had the virus. So, so what is your plan as governor for your state? So we, we laid out a very detailed plan that we announced last Friday. 
And we, we listen to the smartest scientists and doctors, uh, public health uh, officials in our state, and laid out kind of a safe, effective, and gradual reopening um, because we've got to get things back to normal in some way over a period of time, but we have to do it safely. So there's basic building blocks. We want to make sure we have adequate testing. We have surge capacity in our hospitals. We have enough of the personal protective equipment, and, and we, have, we can do this contact tracing so we can identify the people who have been in contact with those people people that have the virus. That's that's the first steps. And then what can you open up safely? We're working with all of our different in industry groups to say, help us come up with plans about how could you reopen your businesses uh, in a safe way that protects um, your workers and your customers. I, I've been struggling to understand how one state can open and other states can stay closed when it feels like that would be counterintuitive if people can cross borders freely, which is what people can do in the United States. I mean, you're hearing reports of the TSA saying airplanes are packed once again. You know, people are flying around much more than they were a few weeks ago. So is there, is there an element of concern that there is no synchronicity to this whole thing? I mean, if Maryland doesn't open, New York doesn't open, and then Georgia does, and another place does, and another place doesn't, doesn't isn't that gonna be undermined if people cross over from one place to the next? You know, the virus doesn't recognize state borders or, or international borders. And uh, in, in our area, we're very close with Washington, D.C., Virginia, and Maryland. And we're all kind of working in, in uh, conjunction with one another, with the governor of Virginia, the mayor of Washington, D.C., to make sure that we're, we're sort of on the same page because many of our people live in one jurisdiction, work in another. They travel back and forth on the same metro system. And uh, it's hard if one person opens up everything um, if somebody opens up all the bars and restaurants, everybody from our state will go over there and bring it back. You know, so you've got to work together and it's, you've got to be done in a smart way. But the, the president uh, has said every, each governor is going to make those own decisions. Governors are making decisions and uh, we're hopefully going to work together and figure out ways that we're not, you know, spreading it from one place to another. Whereas most countries in the world seem to be fighting the virus on its own, America seems to be fighting the virus while Democrats are fighting Republicans. You know, it seems like, it seems like some states are making their decisions based on the fact that they're Republican. Some states seem to be making the decision uh, in a different way. And, and what's confusing to me is, is, is whether some of these decisions are being made for political reasons or just based on the facts. Do you have a sense of that because you talk to all of these governors? I'm sure that there's probably some politics in some of the, of the decisions, Trevor, but I would argue that I've never seen uh, in my lifetime the kind of uh, bipartisan cooperation that we've seen. I've never, you know, we've had almost daily or every other day we're talking, all the governors talking to one another, sharing what's going on in their states. Uh, different people may be making different decisions, but there's been, I think, less politics than normal. Um, I, and my colleagues, I haven't really seen you know, uh, people wearing red jerseys or blue jerseys, Democrats fighting with Republicans. We've been saying, how do we help each other? Um, how, you know, how are we dealing with this with our, my, you know, the, my next door neighbor, Governor of Virginia, the mayor of D.C., they're both Democrats. I, it doesn't matter to me. We're all in this together. Um, and I think there's more cooperation. And even in Congress, where there's almost never complete partisan dysfunction, um, they've been able to pass four stimulus bills through the House and the Senate with Republican and Democratic agreement nearly unanimously in like a month. Well, it usually takes 10 years to get a bill passed, you know, so it, it, there's still partisanship and and, uh, and and there's still Republicans and Democrats. But I, I think it's been less, some of that has been pushed aside because we have this common enemy. We're all fighting this virus and trying to save people's lives. Um, before I let you go, I, I wanted to find out in, uh, your plan for Maryland itself. If, if there are citizens of your state right now who are watching this and they're asking themselves, when is it going to open? How is it going to open? I know that you started to think about stages of how to open your state. W what is your game plan right now? So we're waiting for our, our numbers to kind of, we're looking at hospitalization rates and ICU beds. And as that starts to level off and plateau, when, when we see that we're getting safer on the numbers, we're going to gradually open up with some quality of life issues that can, they're still safe, let people get outside and do certain things that are less risk. You know, we have different categories of risk. So phase one will be things that you can go back, start to get things back to normal, some smaller businesses that are low touch, that don't have a lot of interaction, don't have a lot of people jammed in together. And then it's phasing and slowly do things. And two weeks later, take a look at where we are, open up more things and more things uh, before you get to the more, the bigger opening right. up businesses and bars and restaurants and things like that it takes a while. But we're gonna do it in conjunction with the scientists and the business community 
uh, and to make sure that we're doing it in a smart way because what we don't want to do is rush it and then have a spike and that's going to be terrible for the economy if we you know we we, we cause another uh, wave of this and overload our, our healthcare system. Well, Governor Hogan, I thank you so much for your time and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much, Trevor. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here.